Hello everybody and welcome back to Crusader Kings where we need to chill a little bit. We're in debt, so uh, that needs to happen. We can ransom this person and we absolutely will. We can ran payment from this guy and we absolutely will. Excellent. We can imprison a couple of a couple of criminals. That guy would rebel, as would that guy. I think this is worth the, the chance. Only a 9% chance of rebellion for both of these. Okay, yeah, we'll take this. So we'll ransom and imprison both of these. Okay, 9% chance. She has six troops. And no allies. Well, that's adorable. Okay. Well, that's more than six troops. She has 566 over here. They're in retreat right now. She is, I believe, at war, though. Against the King of Pomerania. She's, oh, okay. She's doing two tyranny wars that she's attacking right now. Fascinating. Well, we're not going to have any trouble with this. We're just going to do some... Uh, you know what? I should have... not done it like this. I should have grouped them all up. Oh well. We're going to stop gathering on several of these. I don't think there's any point in gathering levies up. And we're not going to need all of these troops, I don't think. We're going to move up here. We're going to fight this guy. And we're going to siege down her castle. What level fort is this? This is a level 4 fort. Okay. I'm not concerned about that. That'll go very, very quickly indeed. 9% chance. Rebelling with 566 troops. Especially when the game thinks she has 6 troops. <laughs> Does it think she has more now? Actually, no, it doesn't. Bizarre. Okay, whatever. We're going to station besiegers here, and we're going to take these guys up over this way. We're going to chase down her army a little bit. See if we can find anybody over there. We are making a small amount of gold right now, which is nice, considering that we do have our men-at-arms raised. Or some of them, anyway. I'm not sure this is all of our men-at-arms. Actually, I think it is. Actually, I don't think it is. Yeah, these guys are unraised. That's interesting. Well, we don't need them. I'm quite certain of that. She's just going to let us walk up there? With basically the same number of troops, but so much higher quality. This is going to be... This is going to be defensive terrain for us, right? She's not sieging, though. It's wetlands, which is... Defender advantage plus 5, 60% combat width, 25% retreat losses, and 20% friendly fatal casualties. Uh, just generally not a pleasant place to fight for anybody involved. Attacker and defender are basically the same, though, with the slight exception of that defender advantage plus 5. So the question is, who actually gets the defender advantage here? Counters enemy defensive terrain advantage. So she gets the defensive terrain advantage, but we counter it. Gotcha. And that's because of our men-at-arms. Sounds good. Okay, we're actually at 100%. Did we... Oh, we finished the siege. <laughs> okay. We're going to enforce the demands. She is now, of course, imprisoned. Because that was our demands. We'll disband all of our troops. And we will ransom her back to herself. We also captured this person. So that's nice. And then we will ransom her back to herself as soon as we can. There we go. Excellent. 4% chance of imprisoning that guy. 72% of that one. Pass. Okay. Well, we are going to need to make some gold. Unfortunately, it's super early in the episode, and I just heard the cat yelling at the door. So, uh, hopefully nothing happens, but I'm going to go let her in real quickly, and I apologize 
for the interruption. Once again, I apologize for that. The cat is happily on her bed now. We could lose some stress because we're a drunkard, and sure, that is a good thing to do right now. We are a bit up there on the stress, so that is definitely nice to not have to deal with that. We can gain 10 stress or gain 70 stress. Yikes! We'll gain the 10 stress, I guess. I'm not happy about it. But we will do it. We're definitely attempting to chill for right now. Oh, hello. Losing 24 stress. Thank you. We're attempting to chill right now and get our monthly income down. I would love to clean up some of this border gore, but at the same time, Crusader Kings is kind of border gore the game. It's kind of what it does. So that's a thing. We're going to be out of debt fairly soon. The question is, when are we going to get hoardings? In about 12 years. Okay. The Liberty Faction just disbanded. We haven't had factionalism issues for a while, but that's mostly because we have ruled for quite a long time. We're 38, and we've been ruling since we were like 15. So that's nice. Our player error is currently 19. Yeah, we don't need to worry about factionalism, really. It's completely fine. Now, we could revoke this back from this baron. Would anyone mind? Revoking baronies does not incur tyranny. Yeah, we'll do it. That will make us 4.1 additional monthly gold, which will put us up over 30. And I did that because we were at 7 of 8 holdings. So that is absolutely fine. I don't suppose we can do any upgrades over here. No, we can't. Okay. Sounds good. Eh, there's some combat going on over here. I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure we don't need to worry about it. It doesn't involve us. We're currently losing money because of our unraised men-at-arms. Yeah, we're reinforcing these. Interesting. These were unraised. And I guess because we were in debt, they weren't reinforcing. That makes sense. They were unraised because they were at zero of 800, and they weren't reinforcing because we were in debt. Yeah. That fully makes sense, and I can get behind that working that way. Sounds good to me. Now, in terms of what we actually want to do, I'd love to get Vladimir into the fold. There's no way we can really do that. We can, however, grab Soon Forgiven. Avaricious, what exactly does that do? Holding taxes plus 15% versus Administrator's Vassal Opinion. Although this does give 20% Vassal Counselor tax contribution, but that's multiplicative. Of course, so is this. And we would need to have all three of these. Yeah, I think we're better off sticking with Administrator. So, if we were to fight Vladimir, hypothetically, there's not too much we could actually do over there. I'd love to offer her vassalage. We're of a different group, and she's a queen, so it's extremely unlikely to ever happen. We could, however, attempt to fabricate a claim on it. Our Chancellor is currently converting over here, and I guess that's okay for now. It's definitely something we can think about doing. Oh, hello! This guy would become our Duke. Oh, he's been our ally for a while, actually. Yeah. Come on in, buddy. He accepts. Fantastic. Diplomatic expansion is usually the best kind of expansion. Or inheritance expansion. One or the other. 
these guys over here, they're slightly spooky, but they're not going to team up with anyone else who's spooky. Like, there's basically four players right now in this game. Right, because we've got the Mongols over here. We've got the Byzantines, who are actually super weak right now, but that's actually, I think, not strictly speaking true. War started two years ago. If we were to Holy War, the question is, would West Francia intervene? West Francia is, of course, the other player, and they are orthodox. And we're a little scared of them. But if we have the Mongols on our side, I'm not sure we are. Like, counting allies... Are we no longer allied with the Mongols? No, we are. They're just not showing up for whatever reason in our allied troops. Okay. Now the question is, can we call the Mongols into a holy war? They're not of the same religion as us. That is an interesting question. I would love to declare on the Kingdom of Bulgaria here. That would be amazing. And yeah, other Orthodox rulers may join the war. The question is, is this far enough away for West Francia to not be too concerned? And if not... Okay, yeah, this guy is considered a, a potential ally, so the Mongols could be called in. Now, we can't declare this because of our level of devotion. I keep forgetting about that. So the whole thing is moot. But it was an opportunity, and I was going to take it, actually. I was going to do it, if we could. Our piety isn't coming up very much. But I guess that's okay. Now, if we were to attack this guy, we could definitely do a duchy claim on him. And I'd like to go for, say, one of these duchies up in Denmark. Like Sleefzig, perhaps? Now we could fight West Francia, but that would be a protracted, expensive war. As opposed to what we were hoping to do with the Byzantines, which is get in while they're still fighting the Toledo Empire. Oh, I see. They've got a little bit of a land hold over here. Okay. Toledo is definitely getting to the point of being a major player. They're a secondary power, I would say. They're not really a great power. They're, like, on the level of, say, Alba, or perhaps... Not quite Ajuron, but... Maybe Venice? Yeah, they're on, like, that level. They're, they're pretty high up there, though. They're close to being a great power. Like, if we figure great powers are the top five, then yeah, I would say Toledo is definitely in it. It'd be the us, the Mongols, Byzantines, West Francia, and Toledo. Not necessarily in that order. Like, the top dog right now is probably the Mongols. Followed, I think, by us closely. But then it would be West Francia, then I think the Byzantines, and then Toledo. Although the Byzantines are not looking so great right now. <laughs> they uh, might have switched places with Toledo with that last war. Hard to say. These guys up here are, v are vaguely interesting. We may want to consider expanding in the Scandinavian region. If we're going to do any expansion. Because fighting these guys is super expensive. We can do it. We can do it, but it's expensive. We're, I'm, I actually chose to execute her for the faith. I don't think we're going to get Paragon of Virtue, but we'll see. 63%. Uh, that's not, I think, worth rolling. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, I think that if we're going to do any expansion, it should definitely be in the Scandinavian region. The unfortunate part of that 
is that the Scandinavian region is mostly vitalist. Which means we can't expand via Holy War. Except for this guy. He's old vitalist. We have no CB on him? Interesting. What are the Empire titles up here? I mean, we can't make empires right now. Okay, so it's just a single big Scandinavia empire title. We could definitely work on that, particularly if we took this from West Francia. We would need to have primogeniture first. That's for sure. Hmm. We have a CB on this guy. We do! Hang on, is this guy in our realm? He is in our realm. He has a claim on... What is this claim? The Brat Petty Kingdom. And this is a vassal in our realm. I think we're into it. Now, how powerful is this guy? 1762. That's not a problem. We're going to set our rally point over here, and we are going to raise all here. We're going to not gather any levies. We're losing a tiny amount of money. And let's see here. These are... That's the castle there. It's level one? Oh my. And that one's level three. So let's go ahead and split in half. Our larger force can go here to protect this straight. And our faster siege force can go up here to take this barony, which is only a level 4. These will fall super fast. Now, this guy's probably going to attack us out over this way, and I'm fine with that. He can do that all he wants. I'm not even going to call in any allies, I don't think. Um, sure, I will help you. Who are you? Here's our Vitalist Uprising. Why are Vitalists rising up against this guy? He is also a Vitalist. What's going on here? Uh, this is really, really weak. Okay. It's just a populist uprising. So this guy's just unpopular over here. He has 944 troops. That's fine. I keep forgetting it's left click when setting up a new rally point and it's right click when moving the rally point. Slightly awkward, but that's okay. We're just going to raise the local levies here. Okay, and they'll gather for a little bit. And we'll attack over here. We're only going to need like 2,000 troops or so. Which is why we're only gathering local levies. Okay, this is enough. Just checking in on this situation up here. It looks good. I'm not concerned about that. Okay, let's go. I expect that they may group up here. Emphasis on the may. This guy's really indecisive. Okay, now he's actually moving. Let's see what he does. He locked in there. He is grouping up. This is still saying we'll probably win. And I agree. These guys are peasant rabble. Our levy troops should be more than sufficient for this. And I believe we have better leadership. Yeah, better army commander, more army commander traits. We'll be defending in forest because they're sieging, so we get defensive terrain there. So yeah, this is just free. Excellent. Should have no problem with this. And indeed, we are not having a problem with it. We currently control Finland. No, not that Finland. This Finland. Okay, we're going to walk over to this barony. This is a level 2 fort. That's fine. We're going to bring our siege weapons over to this level 4 fort. Okay. And once we win this battle... Oh, 
Our friend died. That gains us eight stress. We're doing okay on the stress front for now. That does mean that we need a new chancellor, though. And we'll put in the King of Hungary. That'll be fine. Once we win this battle, this should be this rebellion completely over. Oh, look who finally decided to join the fray. <laughs> He's a little late. And by a little late, I mean he missed literally the whole fight. Excellent. So these guys are going to need to go back home before we can disband them. Because they cannot disband in neutral territory. Up here... Things appear to be going well. We're not too concerned about this. This is fine. This is completely fine. That siege has begun, and it will not take long for the siege to happen. We are now obese, so that's a thing. Okay, they're landing over here. That's fine. We're ahead on the siege curve, I believe. They do, however have siege weapons. Keep hoping that these guys are gonna... Oh, they did pop over there. Okay, I see that that 3000 is attacking us, and I will deal with that in a moment. We will disband that army. Okay, we will win this decisively. We have much better soldiers, better army commander, better, better army commander traits. Should be fine. It will delay us a little bit. Because a hostile force is attacking us into our attack. That's a thing that seems to ha just happen to offensive wars in this game. I'm not sure I completely like it, but it's, it's kind of a fact of life. I can deal with it. We stack wiped them. Absolutely no problem. Okay, there we go. Oh, we actually, the war is over. <laughs> The war is over. Let's enforce our demands. Excellent. So that guy just became our vassal and gained a petty kingdom. He's now technically a duke, though. Not a petty king. We can demand a payment from this guy. And we're demanding 50 gold from him as payment for taking this for him. Now, we did just become party to this war. And that's okay. We actually just stack wiped these guys, I believe. Yeah, these are the guys we just stack wiped. So that's fine. And these guys are also in the war, but they're not relevant. Who's the actual war leader here? This guy. This is the one that matters, then. But we'll send these guys up here just to keep these guys a bit under control. Excellent. That all looks great. We are about nine years away from holdings. Six years away from windmills, currently. And six months from divine right. Okay. Well, about seven months now. <laughs> I didn't know that timer could go up. But okay, I guess it can. Maybe it's a, like, rounding error or something. Sounds good. We're going to have this siege done momentarily, of course. Absolutely no problems there. The real question is, once we get Divine Right, what is this innovation going to expose next? Our cousin is being a jerk, but that's not unusual. That right there got us 83% war score. Just that siege. These guys are movement locked here. And I think we catch them. Is this our friendly territory? No, that's their friendly territory. Despite the fact that we have it occupied. Interesting. Regardless, they're definitely going to die here. And that puts us at 100% because we captured the war leader. So we will enforce demands. He'll pay us 68 gold. Excellent. And we will disband our troops. We can found a holy order. Pass on that one for right now. It's a good thing to do, but I don't want to give up any of our titles to do it. 
So instead, we will simply grant some some prisoners here. And there'll be even more to ransom once these come through. Excellent. One more. There we go. Huh. What did we just get? We didn't get this. We must have inherited something? Our father died. We probably did inherit something then. Okay, what did we inherit? These over here. Noted. So we're going to grant that one to a low noble immediately. And now we're at nine of eight. This is a really low level castle. I don't want to hold it. Let's just go ahead and grant this to, say, this guy. Okay. So he's now our vassal. Should we hand that off to anybody that he should be de jure belonging to? Apparently not. We can, however, get a new lifestyle perk. We'll grab toe the line for now. I was really hoping that divine right would be done by now. I was really hoping that. Of course, windmills could finish up at any time as well. Wouldn't it be awkward if we got windmills first? Like before divine right? That would be mega awkward. 45% chance to gain 0.84 per month. Yeah, I think it's not going to happen for a little while. It'll definitely happen next episode, though, but I was really, really hoping that Divine Right would finish up this episode. Sadly, it did not. You can leave your offerings to the Engagement Gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and I will see you all next time.